I'm Alicia Glenn. I'm the Deputy Mayor for Housing and Economic Development for the City of New York. The reason why I decided to join government was because the work I've been doing for years about making cities stronger, better, more dynamic, interesting places and investing in companies that want to grow in cities and neighborhood growth is that the work I was doing on Wall Street was amazing, but I realized that only in government can you do things at the scale that I really wanted to be able to do them. A city like New York with eight and a half million people, hundreds of different neighborhoods, amazing different businesses, the work that you can do around and among the neighborhoods and the sectors in New York City is an incredible opportunity. Um, and you can really make a big difference. You know, matters. It does matter who's in government. I think we need women in leadership roles for a variety of different reasons. It's not just that it's the right thing to do, right? It's a hundred years since New York City granted women the right to vote. And yet if you look at the numbers, they're still appalling with respect to the number of women who are running companies, who are in the legislature, who are in executive branches, even the number of women who run nonprofits, which people traditionally think of as women's work. We need women in every single sector to be in positions of power because with power comes better pay, better benefits, better quality of life, and I would argue probably better outcomes. I think people talk a lot about how are women different as leaders. You know, women are as different amongst themselves as they are amongst men. But I do think that women generally tend to be more focused on problem solving in a more collaborative, productive way. There's a little bit less of what I would call that sort of macho, I'm going to mow you down. Look, I can mow somebody down when I need to, but that's not my go-to approach. I think generally women tend to think more collaboratively, want to solve problems. We want to make sure that people have childcare. We want to make sure that the subways run on time. We want to make sure that women get paid. We want to make sure that we grow the economy. And we're willing to think about that in a much more holistic way, not as a one-off. And so I think that you do get different results when more women are in the room talking about the problem they're trying to solve. I think the whole debate about civic engagement is a really interesting topic right now because looking at what happened in 2016 election, suddenly you had parts of the civic engagement that I don't think many of us even thought were engaged. And I think it was a real wake-up call to feminists and progressives and thoughtful people about how are we going to get particularly young people engaged in the really challenging issues of today. I mean, it sounds corny, but you know, my mother fought on the lines, right, for the right to have an abortion or the right to have pay equity. And, and I think that even my daughters grew up a little bit thinking that's the way the world is. But it's very fragile, and there are forces that are working against important issues for women and minorities and, and people across this country. And I think we need to have a really honest dialogue with people about what's going on and why you have to get out of bed and do something about it. Nobody else is going to do it for you. I mean, it really is a return to social activism and getting people um, bought into the to the notion that it matters. I think civic engagement is, is often thought of as a more nebulous concept, but here are two examples, pro and con. You know, last week, people in Virginia said they had enough. And people came out in scores, people who had never voted before, and they turned the Virginia House of Delegates around. On the ground, political activism, and it will make a big difference. The first transgendered woman was elected to serve in a state legislature. On the same token, this week, you know, student debt is no, no longer going to be deductible. You know what? Students need to get out and call their congressman, and they need to march. These are not like hypotheticals. This is actually your life, people. And you better get out there, and you better start getting engaged, because there are some bad things happening. I think people talk a lot about how you build a pipeline of talented women to go into government. You know what, it's not that complicated. Encourage the next really cool, smart, interesting woman you know to run for office. Don't just encourage her to do it. Call your friends, make everybody write a check for $50, and stand on a corner and work the room, work the mall, work the soccer game, work the county fair. It's not that complicated, right? It's about chutzpah. It's about getting out there and doing it, not obsessing about it. The next time you meet a really smart woman who's trying to think about, well, should I go work on Wall Street? Should I go work in a tech startup? Should I go into public service? Say, you know what? Go into public service. And the more who run, the more will ultimately win. Mm -hmm.